my YouTube friends. Multi-streaming is all the rage these days. And I totally get that. If your content strategy is built around live streaming, why not reach the largest audience possible with your content? So I decided to do a video series that will show you how to connect OBS to all the different platforms easily. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to connect OBS to Facebook. It's pretty easy stuff, so you know what? Let's get to it! Now for this video, I'm gonna assume that you already set up your Facebook account. If not, you may wanna do that first and then pick up the video here and follow along. So let's connect up OBS. So when you first come in, you're not going to be connected to anything. So the easiest way to get connected to live stream is to go up here into profile and select new. Now I got a lot of profiles in here as you can see, but you're probably not gonna have any or you're gonna have one. So we're just gonna create a new one and we wanna have this show auto configuration wizard selected. What this is gonna enable us to do is to bypass any knowledge if you're new about how to actually set up your settings to stream to whatever platform you're trying to stream to. So you don't have to know anything to do this. It makes it really easy. So we're gonna call this one Facebook, click OK. We're gonna optimize for streaming with recording as a secondary, and we're gonna click Next. Here it's gonna ask you for your base canvas. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna select 1920 by 1080, but you can select other ones if you want, and then here, I like to leave either uh, 60 or 30, prefer 60 when possible. So what this will do is it will run through basically a test to see whether your machine can handle running at 60 frames per second. If it deems that you can't, it will set it at 30. Now you can change it back to 60 if you want, but chances are you might get buffering and things like that. So it's best to let it run the test and decide what it decides. We're gonna go ahead and click next. And here is where we're gonna set up our service. So we wanna to go to Facebook. We're gonna drop this down and select Facebook Live. So it doesn't have any way to actually enter your stream key in here. So what we're gonna to have to do is go to get a stream key. And it's gonna bring us to this page. You may have to log into your Facebook in order for it to do this, but once you log in, it's gonna bring you here. And what we really wanna do is we wanna to go to create live video event. Now, go live is just gonna give you the opportunity to create one live stream. Whereas we wanna create a live stream we're gonna do possibly in the future. We wanna be able to kind of replicate that and do it over and over again. So we're gonna go ahead and create an event. Takes a couple seconds for this to come up and you can select the date and time of your event. Here you're gonna upload a cover photo. And this is basically your thumbnail, so just select the thumbnail, click OK. Over here, we're gonna put our event name in. For us, we're just gonna put in test. And here is our start date and our start time. If we wanted to set a recurring event, we can do that. Basically, now you're just gonna set your start date, your start time, and all that stuff with your event time. But here, you'll select the frequency, whether it's gonna be daily, weekly, or custom. We're just gonna go ahead and cancel that. We just wanna set up a one-time event, so we can set it up right here. Then we can go down here and select our privacy level. So private is only people that you specifically invite to the event. Public means that anyone on Facebook can watch it, or you can go to a group or something like that if you have uh, any groups that you want to stream to. Now just be aware that when you stream to a group of any specific type, you could run into situations where it's difficult to capture your chat. So just keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and set ours to private so it's only people that we invite coming in here. And now we can set the description for what our live stream is about. And here you want to just describe what you're going to be talking about on your live stream. Once you're done with that, we can click next. And we can go back and re-edit any of the event options in here and add co-hosts and that sort of stuff. We could show a guest list if we want. Uh, next, we're gonna wanna hit settings. And here we've got our stream settings. And this is where we're gonna have our stream key as you can see over here. We can set up our latency, allow the encoder to end the stream when we just click end stream in OBS, or it'll stay up and we can end it specifically on Facebook if we want. We can unpublish after the live event is over. So in other words, it'll stay live on Facebook until you're done going live, and then it will just 
unlist it. So you won't be able to see it, your audience won't be able to see it. Now here we can use a persistent stream key, which means the same stream key is used every time we stream for any event that we want. And then there's a backup stream. I've never really seen this used. I don't know why we would use it. Now this stream key that's listed here is specifically for the event that we're creating. But if we never wanna have to play around with the stream key again in the future, we can go ahead and set that and use the persistent stream key. I don't generally recommend this. I like to have a different stream key for every event. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that. But this is the stream key that we're looking for over in OBS. So we're just gonna click copy. We're gonna go over here into OBS and we're gonna add this stream key right here. Boom, now it's there. And now what we could do is click next. And now it's gonna do a bandwidth test. This is gonna test how good our connection is. And it's also going to test what our machine is capable of doing. So we just click yes here, and it's gonna take a few moments to run through the test. So while it's doing that, what we're gonna do is jump over here, and we're going to go ahead and just click create event. It takes a couple moments to create the event, and so we could just return home once we're done. Now we're gonna go over here, and everything is created. So here, we've got the program that determines our settings. So we're going to Facebook Live. The server is the default. Uh, Multi-track video is a no. It sets our video bit rate at 4,000, and our streaming encoder is all set by the test that it just ran. Now it does have our base canvas resolution here, and our output resolution here. So it's basically saying that it's going to stream to Facebook at 1280 by 720. Now this could be a setting that's basically set on Facebook, meaning maybe Facebook won't allow me to stream higher than 720, but we can reset that if we want to. For now, we're just going to click Apply Settings. Generally speaking, you want your base canvas and your output scaled resolution canvas to be exactly the same because otherwise it can actually affect the performance of your encoder. So we're gonna apply those settings. And we're gonna go over here into Settings and we're gonna go into our video and we're just gonna go ahead and change our output scaled resolution to be the same as our input scaled resolution. And we're gonna leave everything else the same. Let's go over into Facebook for just a quick second. So we've created our live event and we can get to that by going into our live events over here on the side and we can go and take a look at our events right here. And we've got our online test. So we could just click go live and we're ready to do it. It's gonna bring us in here. So just in case, every time we create a new event, we're gonna have a new stream key. So for the next event that we set up when we wanna go live, because we're already all set up for this event that we created. So we can just click start streaming and we're going to be live streaming right to Facebook. But for the next event that we create on Facebook, how are we gonna know the new stream key? Well, all we have to do is go into settings and we're gonna go into stream and you can see we've got our stream key here. So all we have to do is basically go ahead and highlight over that we can click backspace so we don't have anything in there. And then on Facebook, we're just gonna go ahead and copy that stream key and paste it in there. And so that's what we're gonna do every time we create a new event that we wanna stream to. And now when we click start streaming, we know we're gonna be streaming to this Facebook event. And once we start streaming, it's gonna show up down here and we're gonna have our chat and all that kind of stuff. It's all gonna kind of go right in here. So we'll be all set, ready to go. It's pretty easy to set up Facebook to live stream. And the reason why we go through the setup wizard is basically so that you don't have to know all of these output settings right here. You don't have to learn all this stuff. It's gonna set it up and optimize it for you so you don't really have to care. Now, you know everything that you need to know to just go live and have fun and start streaming. And you can learn all that other stuff later. Now, what if we wanted to multi-stream from Facebook, but also maybe to YouTube? There are a couple of different applications that we can use to multi-stream. I'm gonna assume that you already have one on your system, and I'm gonna show you on the ATEM multi-stream. Now, there are other ones, and they basically work the same, but the ATEM seems to be the most popular one, so that's the one I'm gonna show you. To access that, we just go into Docs, and we're gonna go ahead and grab our ATEM Multistream. You can see it appears right here. So we'll just bring it over here, and we're gonna dock it, and you can see that it already has our built-in Facebook stream. So to add another one, we're gonna go ahead and click here. We're gonna go to Main Canvas, and we're gonna add an output. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this. They make it really easy 
to add anything that you want. So we can add YouTube and TikTok and Facebook and Trovo and X and Kick and whatever. It makes it really simple to add. So we're just gonna go ahead and select YouTube. It gives us the YouTube output name. We have our primary ingest server and all we need is our YouTube stream key, which is pretty easy to get. Over in YouTube, you're gonna to wanna to go to your live streaming dashboard. If you don't know how to get there, that would be just by clicking this live streaming button right here. And then you could just go up and grab a general stream key by going here to stream. And right here, it gives us a stream key. So we can reset it if we wanted to change the stream key or we can just copy it right here. And then all we have to do is go back into OBS, paste that stream key right here, and click create output. Now we can click OK and our output is created. So now when we select go live or start streaming right here, it's gonna start streaming to Facebook and to YouTube. Now sometimes depending upon how you set up your YouTube live stream, you may have a button that shows up up here that says go live. So what'll happen is it'll start to receive streaming information right here and it'll say excellent or whatever down here to tell you that it's getting the information really well. And then there'll be a little button that appears up here that says go live. So it's kind of a two step process sometimes on YouTube, but not all the time. You're not gonna see the go live button all the time. It really depends whether you create a scheduled event or whether you just choose the stream event. If you just choose the stream event when you go live, it's gonna basically go live. But sometimes you're gonna have the little button up here where you have to click go live. So just wanna make you aware of that possibility. And that's pretty much all there is to it, to multi-streaming. You see both your streams up here, but you can have five or six if you want. You add whatever you want. When you click start streaming, they're all gonna start streaming. Now I told you it was pretty easy. Is there something that I missed or a platform that you wanna see a tutorial on how to connect? Let me know about it down in the comments. You can check out this video to see how you can have all your chats right in OBS. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.